points of access with fellow point. Showing you how to improve access to your digital world. When you're using PowerPoint 2016 and you want to make your slideshow accessible to those who have visual impairments and for those who are blind, you need to think along the lines of contrast and structure. So today we're going to go through the elements of PowerPoint that can build structure and contrast that will help those with visual impairments to be able to read your content. We have a blank presentation open right now and the first slide is just a title slide and I've numbered the title one and I've numbered where you would put in the author of the slide presentation or the presenter as number two. And on slide two I have made a heading with two points. So I'm now going to go up here and create a new slide using a blank slide. And the reason I'm doing this is that if you stay in making slides using these layouts and choosing title slide or title and content and section header and so forth. Each one of these has a place for you to build structure for someone who has a visual impairment and someone who's using a screen reader relies on that content to navigate through the slides. But when you have a blank slide like this, there's no content here for them to know that there's even a slide here and there are things that you can put on a slide that are invisible to them. So I'm going to come up here to the insert tab and I'm going to insert two of those floaters one a text box and one a word art. So when I click on text box it gives me a pointer that I can type on the screen. Now since I've numbered the other parts of this, I'm going to number this 4. So this is a text box and you can put the text box anywhere on the screen. The same thing will happen when I come back to insert tab and then click on word art. Word art is actually considered to be a picture, even though it has text in it. It has all these graphical elements involved in its presentation. And so when we start talking about tagging pictures and graphics, we'll come back to this. We're going to make another blank slide. And in this one, we're going to insert another type of floating graphical material called SmartArt. I'm going to choose to pick a cycle. And so I'm going to choose this one right here. And after you do that, you can choose whether you want it colored differently and I am going to choose the most colorful one they have. Now each element in this graphic is a graphic of itself so when you are labeling a graphic like this you can label the 10 graphical elements plus have text inside of them and depending on how complicated the material is that you put inside of these, you can have an elaborate uh, graphic to represent 
to someone who's using a screen reader. We're also going to go over that. For the next slide, we're going to be looking at a graphic that is so complicated that it's better to find an alternative source for the document, the picture, so that someone who has a visual impairment would be able to access the content. So I'm going to make a new slide. And then I'm going to go to Insert Tab, click Picture. I'm going to go to Desktop, and I'm going to insert a periodic table. Now this is just a piece of artwork that I pulled off the web, and it's really not that great, but it serves the purpose of demonstrating a graphic that is so complicated that writing an alt tag for it would be near impossible. You should still write an alt tag of some sort, clicking on this size and properties while you're formatting the picture and calling it. Uh, So once you finish formatting the picture, what you want to do is go on the web and find an actual accessible version of this, which I've already done. So I'm going to come to Chrome and then this is the periodic table that I want to use. And so I have the URL up here and I click up here, and then right click on it and copy it back to the PowerPoint, right click on the picture, click hyperlink, then I right click and paste the information for that link. And so now this will link out to an accessible version of a periodic table. I'm going to come back to home. I'm going to create another new slide. And this time I have an Excel spreadsheet and this is it. So what I want to do is I want to copy this material and I want to come back to my PowerPoint and I want to right click and paste it in and then resize it. click it, format shape, size and position, and type of title. Type in your title and your description. These last two slides have no semantic markup and you want to make sure all your slides have some kind of markup so that someone with a screen reader or someone who is visually impaired will have a marker by which they can navigate through the content. So we're going to go back to slide 5. We're going to go to the layout up here and put in a title. then we're going to do the same for six. Layout, title only. And then title the slides what would best fit the content in the slide. The second issue that we want to talk about is the contrast. And that will be best demonstrated up here on slide three. If we go to Design tab and choose one of these darker selections, you'll see that 
these letters aren't that distinct in the word art. So making a selection such as this, you might want to edit in the drawing the clarity of those letters so that they're easy to see. And a dark background you want white letters and a white background you want dark letters. You also want to make sure the size of the text is large enough for people to see it. The issues of contrast and semantic markup are the most important too, but it is also demonstrated that when you add other content into a slide series, depending on the user's ability to use the assistive technology they have, they may miss some content. That's especially true of two things. One would be the notes section, which is down here at the bottom. So I'm going to type in a note. other area is where you add comments. Click on this comments here and it adds another pane and so you click new and you can type in a comment. So when you look on the screen when I finish the note all you have is this little little bubble now with a screen reader, the person using the screen reader may be trained to read all the different content of a PowerPoint. And so you have different regions. You have the, the bar up here with the tabs and the ribbons. Then you have the thumbnails. Then you have the content. And depending on what pane is open, you have information in the pane to read. Then you have the notes section and you also have the, how to manage the the presentation and the transitions down here so when someone uses a screen reader it toggles through these in an order but someone who is not experienced using a screen reader someone who hasn't used it well or often in PowerPoint will have difficulty reading this PowerPoint because of the extra additional content in it. They would definitely have trouble reading this context, finding the alt tags. So rather than saving this as just a PowerPoint, you might want to save it off as a PDF. And so I'm going to come up here to Acrobat, click Create PDF. and then it's already set as type for PDF here and the file name is fine for me and I'm going to save it back on the desktop click Save and it asks if I want to convert the presentation speaker notes to text annotations and I say yes once it's done publishing it will open up and in my case, it's going to open up in Acrobat Pro DC. And I don't want to look at Acrobat Pro DC when looking at this because I want to demonstrate what a student would look at. So I'm going to close out this content and minimize my PowerPoint. I'm going to come to the sample PowerPoint here on the desktop, right click it open with Reader, Adobe Reader. And so this is the way the content will look to someone who has a visual impairment or is blind. Of course someone who's blind would be using a screen reader and they would be able to listen to this. So there's 
the markup and each element shows up. What's really nice to know is that not only do the elements show up, but they're able to go through the table and listen to the content. So that's the best way to ensure that your readers are going to be covered. I don't suggest using outline RTF and I do suggest using both the PowerPoint and the Adobe Acrobat files so that you will be able to deploy your instructional content to the widest possible audience. Thank you.